The goal for most music producers is to land placements, or in simpler terms, have an artist buy and use their beat or musical composition. Now the process of earning money from that placement comes from two main roads, one being the purchasing or leasing upfront fee, and the other being the royalties that come from that new song. However, these two roads are very much more complicated than just that. You sign the contract and all this money is yours. That's my money anyway, Jerry, I earned that money. Sometimes when an artist is purchasing a beat, it may be a lease, which means the artist is leasing the rights from the producer to use it in their song. To put it simply, the artist doesn't own the beat and may need to lease it again after the given term or clauses. Typically, leasing contracts are cheaper and range from $20 to $200. Leasing also tends to come with more restrictions for that artist as well. Don't you think I sound like shit? No, it's good. Can we try it again? Sure, yep. Sure, it's, it's your money. Other times, an artist may purchase the exclusive rights of the beat, which means they are now the sole owner of the beat for their song. All right, cool, so I could take this to a lawyer or somebody, right? Cube, those guys are paid to make trouble. They're gonna create problems where no problems exist. Now, unless the artist and producer agreed to a buyout agreement, that producer is entitled to the royalties of that beat they exclusively sold. At the end of the day, there is no guarantee that the song will be successful, which is why the producer will have a price up front. However, in the case that the song becomes a super smash hit, earning millions of dollars, the producer won't be left behind with no royalties. Since exclusive rights and buyout agreements can only be done one time for a beat or musical composition, the price for them is much higher, often ranging from $500 to sometimes over $10,000. Now the price also depends on the credits of the producer and that royalty agreement, as well as if the artist is signed to a record label. However, royalties and splits of such have always been a confusing topic. There's publishing royalties, which make up the composition, and then there's recording royalties, which are the masters. Publishing royalties break down to the performance, mechanical, and publisher royalties, whereas recording royalties break down to the digital performance and sales revenue and the master recording revenue. Publishing royalties would be collected by an agency such as SongTrust, who works with performing rights organizations such as BMI and ASCAP. Whereas the recording royalties would be collected by DistroKid, TuneCore, United Masters, or an artist's record label. So how is this explained more simply? Well, for the first example, let's use a fully independent artist and producer. Independent at home royalties. Let's say producer Andrew sells an exclusive rights beat to independent artist John for $250. Well now what needs to be discussed is royalties and splits. Since both of them are completely independent, they don't have any label backing and no one overhead to pay, they can freely discuss about splitting the whole song down the middle where artist John takes 50% of publishing and 50% of recording royalties and producer Andrew takes the other half of each. However, let's say that John wants to own more of the recording royalties because he'll be putting up his own money for the marketing, recording, and cover art, etc. So maybe instead of $250, producer Andrew will sell it to John for $400. But now independent artist John can take 80% of the recording royalties. Producer Andrew will now take only 20%. However, their publishing royalties will remain 50-50. Typically, the reason why publishing royalties will remain the same is that the publishing is referring to the overall composition of the song, the lyrics and the musical beat. So as long as those don't change, nor should the publishing. Or in other simple terms, if there's not additional songwriters, or no songwriters being removed, then the splits should be the same. Whereas the sound recording and masters is referring to the actual song file or masters, which historically labels and distributors would own the majority share of. Which brings us to our next example. God damn it, we deserve better than this. 
You know what, don't think that I don't appreciate everything you guys have done here, Jerry. I did. I mean, I'm very proud of the work that we've done here together, but Atlantic has done pretty good money-wise on my records, haven't they? Yes, we've done very well, Ray. Yeah, you were the ones that taught me that making a record is business and find the best business deal that you can. Now, 75 cents of every dollar and owning my own masters is a pretty damn good deal. Record label signed artist royalties. So here's where things get more complicated and tricky, and the situation may very well be slightly different for each signed artist. Let's say an independent producer, Andrew, sends some beats over to industry artist Bob. Bob is signed to Atlantic Records under a royalty record deal. Bob records a song and wants the song released on his next album. Atlantic Records or someone on Bob's team will then reach out to Andrew about purchasing the beat on Bob's behalf. Since Bob is signed under a standard royalty record deal where the label owns the sound recording or masters of Bob, the label, Atlantic Records, will take 85% of the masters or sound recording revenue and Bob will get 15%, which of that 15%, he will give 3-5% to to producer Andrew, leaving artist Bob with only 10-12% to of the master royalties. Bob's master royalties will then go towards paying back the label for his costs, advance, and such. Since Atlantic Records or Bob's team is facilitating the deal, they will more than likely give the producer a larger purchase fee on the beat in order to retain more of the percentage rights as well as reassurance that they will get the best possible work from the producer, Andrew. So producer Andrew may get paid $2,500 to $10,000 depending on his credits and relationships while collecting 3-5% to of the master or sound recording revenue and then his half of the publishing royalties. Since record labels typically facilitate only the sound recording revenue, they should not be touching the producer's publishing share or artist's publishing share. However, publishing agencies like Universal Music Publishing Group will offer advances for producers or artists in order to collect a percentage of their publishing revenue, similar to what a record label would do for your sound recording revenue. Since a label is managing the artist, there's hopes and expectations that the song will do better than the most independent releases, making the publishing side of royalties more lucrative for both parties. However, there are no guarantees. Of course though, the more people involved on a song will also mean the less money to go around. So super big pop songs that have five plus different songwriters and producers may gross a lot of money, but after the split among all the creators, it may not be as large as anticipated. 75 cents of every dollar and owning my own masters is a pretty damn good deal. Can you match it? Ray, we would love to match it, but we just can't. Producers earn a percentage of their sound recording revenue and their publishing. However, distinguishing the two may be difficult, and working with artists and their teams discussing finances and payments is often a sensitive topic. When working with an artist, try discussing with them or their team up front with what the terms you or they are expecting so you can assure yourself that you're going to get the most fair and best deal possible. Make sure that also the artist has the appropriate documentation and registration for their music so they're collecting everything as well. There's plenty of money in this industry, but with confusing situations and the popularization of independence, it's been easier for more producers to get left out of their credits and splits. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, over on this channel, we do a lot of music production and tutorials and give producers sample packs and such. So if you found this video informative and helpful, please check out our other content. You can get more samples, products, and downloads over at beatitat.com. Any questions or concerns, you can leave them down in the comments down below or reach out to me via Instagram. My Instagram is the real Andrew Rapier or beatitat.